Uh, no, by no, by prints you mean like co like you copy off a certain number and then. Yeah, I um, did. Uh, you know, I, I scan the original plates and then I do these. It's a hundred, so there'll be a hundred limited edition prints. I've done a fundraiser. I've, I've sold, I think, like twelve or so so far um, for the American Indian College Fund. So it's something I usually try to do. If people um, like my work, I try to raise some different funds for for my favorite organization so absolutely very cool that's that's awesome that was my my first kind of question is just how did you get in touch with him did he reach out to you what was the process there of connecting with a, a level a guy um, a, status yeah well I, I spoke with uh, Michaela I want to say on Instagram or Twitter but maybe a year and a half ago two years ago right before right before the pandemic took off and um, I'm not sure how we got connected, but we had been messaging back and forth. So every couple of uh, couple of months, are you going to record this? Um, whenever you're ready, uh, I can officially click record. Otherwise, um... yeah. If you want to, if you want to record, I, I would just love to also get a copy of it, Chase, because uh, my historical society has asked me for digital content. So what would happen if you can get me the file? I can save it and it'll go up to the state archive with your name on it, and. Um, Kind of just document our talk here today. Yeah. So they're they're always looking for different digital content. So maybe you know you can send it over via WeTransfer or something. That's awesome. We'll do. It. So um, I already I already clicked record. Uh, I was just going to ask whenever you felt ready, and if you're good to go, then I'll just keep what we've got so far. Yeah, no no problem. Um, so you asked me how I uh, got in touch with Jordan. So McKay and I were messaging back and forth for about a year and a half, two years, on I, I want to say it was Instagram and. Um, she said she liked my work and then every, you know, every two, three, four weeks, I would send her over some of the work that I had been working on and stuff like that. And we just kind of kept this little rapport, um, you know, COVID um, shut everything down. So that was kind of off the table and I knew that. And then about, you know, a year later, um, I found out about him being very sick and and I was trying to follow that story as best I could. And, and she said, yes, he's very sick and we're, you know, we're not sure um you know if he's going to get on tour again or what's what's the um what's the future look for him so she was rather concerned i was rather concerned and and she had said to me that um you know at some point if we get back on tour if we ever get close to north dakota we will um we'll get jordan over to your studio and you can take his photograph so that's kind of how it was it was all through michaela she she arranged everything so um I had heard, I saw that his tour was out. I saw that he started doing uh, vid videos again and interviews again and podcasts again. And I started to see him getting um, stronger and healthier. And and then I saw that he had a world tour coming on and I found out that he was going to be in Minneapolis on March 9th. So about 10 days before that, I reached out to her and said, Michaela, he's, he's, I mean, he's 400 miles from me. I said, you know, if you can just like get on a plane, he'll be here in 35 minutes and then I can have him for an hour and I can send him back and and it's just his his schedule is way too tight so she said no, no Shane you just I can't um just the way the schedule is right now there's just she looked and she said there's no there's no way we can do it so I was kind of bummed um I was running at the time I, I got I was on the treadmill I got on the treadmill and I thought well wait a minute why don't I just let's just go to him and during this um during my run I said Michaela I'll come to you I'll bring my dark room I'll bring all my lights, my chemistry, everything. It's a rather daunting task to bring this this on the road, and I, I and I know darn well that I can't do my best work on the road. Um, you know, with the natural light and stuff. I knew I was going to have to use these continuous bulbs and stuff, and not get too technical with the photography stuff. But um, I knew that. Um, but at least I could get a shot at him. So she says, "Well, I'm going to have dinner with him in five minutes. I'll let you know if he's interested, if or if he if he'll make time." And and like five minutes later, she texts me back and said, "He's he'll do it." So then she told me what time to meet him, and um, we didn't really have a place to uh, to meet. So um, I rented out a, a um, conference room at a local hotel that was just a block, half a block away from where he was speaking that night. And um, yeah, and then next thing you know, um, I'm on my way there, packing everything up and, and meeting them there. And then um, they gave us VIP passes. Me and a, a friend of mine, Carl Sovak, from uh, the dean from the University of Mary which is the only Catholic university here in North Dakota. Um, he's a big fan of Jordan's and, and I needed a, an assistant anyway, doing help me with the carrying and, you know, moving the water around and doing everything that I need while, while I focus on, 
on Jordan shoot. So he said, I'll be your apprentice for the day. So him and I kind of um, took off and went to Minneapolis and got our, um, we were promised an hour with Jordan um, and we got nearly two hours with him. So, wow. That's beautiful. I saw your picture on Instagram on all of the stuff you'd be bringing in. Did, did you drive all of that equipment there? Yeah. Yeah. I put in the back of my, uh, back of my H3 Hummer and, um, and uh, it just it, it fills fills the whole vehicle up, and then you're just um, you know you got to unload it all and make. If you're missing one component, understand Chase, one component, one drop bottle of chemistry, and I had double bottles of everything, so I had redundancy built into this too because you just can't be on site and Jordan showing up, and, and not just Jordan. You know, I've captured Greta Thunberg, um, I've ca uh, captured Deb Haaland, I've captured Evander Holyfield. You, you can't be in those situations to have these people for these very limited exposures in these very limited amounts of time and you drop one bottle of silver you lose your developer your fixer doesn't work um you're done for i mean you're not making pictures that day and that would just be completely devastating to be given an opportunity like that so when you're when you leave this you know here in the studio i always have i could always i could always you know I could always mix more chemicals. I could always work on the fly. I've got all my resources here in my natural light studio here in my backyard. But on the road, you're um, it's not like you're going to go down to Walmart and get some, you know, some fixer. You're going to get some any anything that you need. The bottle collodion. I mean, these these chemicals are not readily available. So you either have them with you and you don't. And I and I have redundancy in my, especially when I go on such important trips like this. There's redundancy. So if we do drop a bottle of silver nitrate, I have got another bottle. Very cool. Yeah, I saw that post and I just knew there was so much stuff behind it that I wanted to know more about what goes all into traveling with that type of equipment and how it works. Yeah, there's a, there's a checklist. So I, I made a checklist some years ago and, and you just, uh, like Santa does, I suppose you to check it twice, make sure everything's there. So um, I need all my chemistry. Um, I need a portable dark room. So um, I, this is called wet plate photography from 1851 for your listeners. Um, so this is um, the, like the second um, photographic process known to man Abraham Lincoln had his, I think Jordan even posted that on his Twitter. I think he said Abraham Lincoln had his photograph taken this process. Um, so I have to have, um, it's uh, once I pour the plate, I pour the clothing on the plate uh, before I sensitize it, that plate cannot dry. So I, I have to, once I start this process, it's about a 15 minute process of pouring the plate, sensitizing the plate exposing the plate, developing the plate, rinsing the plate, fixing the plate, rinsing the plate. This all has to happen. And I, and I, there's, there can be no break in that, um, in that chain of events. So, um, you know, people think about, you know, your iPhone, uh, how many photographs would you take tomorrow with your iPhone? If you had to have a portable dark room at your disposal, I mean, you'd be wherever you're at, you're at a restaurant, could take a picture of your meal, or something like we do all, you know, in modern day, we just take pictures of all kinds of stuff, but you'd have to have a portable dark room set up and it's just not, it's not conducive to the kind of photography we're used to in the digital world. So you, you just have to go back 171 years and um, put yourself in that place. And, and this is the only process that I know, Chase. So I've had other photographers, I never owned a camera before 2012, but I've had other professional photographers say, you know, it's such an archaic process. It's so difficult, it's expensive. You know, why do you practice it? But this is the only photographic process I've ever known. Um, so to me, there's no hindrances, these, these limitations and these difficulties and all the all the um, the stepping stones you have to take to make one of these images and to pull one of these images off. To me, it's it's just what I have to do to make my work. So. I, I don't see any of this stuff as limitations at all. But um, you know, people that are used to modern photography, I mean, it it is. It seems like a very daunting task to be able to capture these um, these images. And and for me, um, what's most important is that I just got. You know, I went there knowing I just need to get that one image. Um, you know, I knew. You know, I, I was going there with 10 pieces of glass. So I mean, the most that I could take on that day was 10 pieces. You know, 10 photographs. I mean, if I was to tell you that you got to you take your iPhone, you're going to go get Jordan Peterson for two hours, but on your iPhone, you have only have enough memory for 10 pictures and you can't delete any pictures. You, once you take an exposure, it's gone. Um, you can kind of understand the, 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 um, what was, you know, um, the task that was in, uh, in hand that this is, you only have so many shots at that's And I, and so what I did is I got four over an hour and 45 minute period. 
And there was a lot of talking there. Jordan likes to talk. Um, he likes to get to know. He really had a lot of questions about the process. He, but you know, Jordan being Jordan, he came prepared. Like he had, he had scoped out my my media page and he had watched some videos of me doing my stuff. So he did not come in like completely um, naive to what he was getting himself into. And and you know, to be honest, I was expecting that. I mean, he's. He's an intellectual, um, and he just he's just not going to get himself into a situation where he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have some kind of grasp of what's going to happen. So, but I mean, to be able to show Jordan Peterson uh, a photographic process that he's never seen before, it's rather fascinating. I mean, it's it's a really, and he was just um, he was just kind of enthralled with it all. He just really appreciated, had really good questions. So there was a lot of, I mean, if we would have really put our nose to the grind, so we probably could have got twice as many plates, but. You know, we had this time together and it, there wasn't, you know, and at one point I knew I was getting close to an hour and Jordan had a lunch uh, date um, with his wife and some friends. And, you know, he he saw that I was getting a little bit, a um, little bit frantic um, trying to get everything that I wanted to get done. And he said, Shane, just, you know, lunch can wait a little bit. I mean, there's the people that are that, you know, that are waiting for me and my wife. Um, they they will um, they will understand. And I, I, he says, I really want you to be able to do what you want to do. So it, it really spoke volumes um, uh, about him and his character. But at the end of the day, um, I had asked that I I'd said, I, you know, I'd be more than happy to take Tammy's photograph. So she wasn't there. And then he had the driver go to Tammy from me. He says, this is how it has to happen. So he went and grabbed Tammy from the hotel and brought her over. And then I was able to capture her portrait. So there's um, two individual portraits. The first portrait I did of Jordan was just a head on shot. And then I did one of Tammy. So those two portraits, so I made five plates that day. Those two portraits are going to be framed and gifted to them. So I'll send them up and so that they can hang on their wall. So there's, there's two uh, get, um, plates for the family. And then I've got these three other plates that I need to find archives for. And I've already been in um, contact contact with the the Royal Alberta Museum and they are deliberating already filled up the forms to acquire one of the uh, one of the portraits into their permanent archive which is wh what I had promised him from the beginning that I, I wanted to get these they don't do me any good um here I need to you know to to make a historic image or an iconic image for the man you have to find a home for it because when you make an object that'll be here a thousand years from now if you don't find the proper home you just never know what's going to happen to that after I pass away and you know, my children may covet my work. And I say this all the time, they may covet my work, but then my children's children, are they going to covet my work? And my children's children's children, are they going to look after my work? And, and at some point you may get down the line where, you know, this ends up in a, a waste bin or someone puts it on eBay or, or, or gets rid of it at some auction or something like that. So for me, it's all about um, making the works um, and then donating the works to different museums. And I have 44 museums as of, um, as of, as we're talking right now around the world that are curating my work. Very cool. And does that mean having a, a, a hard copy, having the plate of the photo you took, or is that copying what's on the plate and getting no, it no, no. the museum? It's... No, that would, that would make any, no, it would, they, they get the original plates. Okay. I understand Chase that the, the, the only, it's like a painting. Like if I was a painter, I wouldn't give a museum a print of a painting. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, you know what I mean? Like it, it has no value. And, and and students will come in and come into my studio. And I got prints. I just showed, shared with you before a conversation that print that I did in Jordan. I mean, that's a scan of the plate. And I can do these nice paper prints. But I always tell the students, they'll say, well, I love this. And well, that's not my work. And they look at me and they like, you know, I, 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 I do this exercise on purpose. I said, that's not my work. Unless it's silver on glass, that's my work. These are just very, very pale representations of the original plate. So no, I don't, I don't donate. The only thing that museums would ever get um, would warrant it that they get is the original plate. So there's one, these plates are one of a kind. Can, they can be scanned and I can duplicate them. I can even print them on glass, but the print on the glass is not the original silver plate. Understand if you look at this romantically, I took 10 second movies of Jordan. So I have 40 seconds of his life captured in pure silver. You're going to have like 15 heartbeats during these are 10 second exposures to each photograph. So during that 10 seconds, I took the lens cap off and, and I was counting out loud to Jordan. He was his heart was beating and he was having a shallow breath and he maybe did a quick blink. And guess what? And I explained this to Jordan. I said, Jordan, what's most romantic about this is that if you have a thought, that thought can be transferred to my photograph because this is not an instantaneous thing. So when I you know, you grab your iPhone out and start snapping at 1 60th of a second. That's 600 times less time than my process. So when I have these long out, drawn out 10 second exposures, I mean, hold your breath for 10 seconds. It's an amount of time. I, I have 40 seconds 
of Jordan's life on in silver on glass, which it's a still life movie. That's just um, that 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 has all that life and that thought that and he was every play Jordan was having some kind of thought and I never asked my sisters what they were thinking. That's between them and me, but I asked him to look at the plate and see if the thought comes across. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just a hopeless romantic when it comes to this process. I mean, it's, it's the best photographic process man ever invented. And we, you know, we abandoned this in 1885 for something more inexpensive, something, you know, more convenient. You know, they, they didn't have to have the dark room, and, but it wasn't a good enough reason. If I can make por portraits in 2022, there's no reason they shouldn't have kept using this process. But it was abandoned about 1885 for, for something more convenient. Where was your first intro into the photography? I know as a school kid in elementary school, I learned that they would carry wagons around with dark rooms during the Civil War to capture some- Absolutely, yep. Brady and them, yep, absolutely, yep. And and, and my, my H3 Hummer is no different than that wagon. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's outrun by horse, but it, but if you, I've got, a, I got this picture, I've got a picture of, uh, there was a photographer in Crimea years ago, back in the 1860s, and he's on his wagon and you, you know, you see he's all packed up and stuff. And, and I, and I took a picture of me and my sitting on top of my, my car with my stuff packed up, kind of like showing that this is, you know, it's just a, it's 170 years removed from between the two pictures, but we still have to achieve what he was doing in 170 years ago, whoever the photographer was, I have to do the same thing. And I, you know, we're practicing, we're not pretending to take old time photographs. We're actually taking old time photographs. I would so love to see that when photo. you do that. I would love to see the comparison. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I've, um, yeah, I don't know how to, let's see here. Just whatever you Should we not, do I, do I, do I mess you up by uh, not no. continuing? No, you're fine. No, you're no. going to, you're going to, you're going to edit? Yeah, if needed, if needed. It's not a problem. Well, I don't whatsoever. mean, okay. Yeah, I, I, when we're done here, just remind me. I'll share, Eric, share, I'll share it with you, the, sure. my photograph. So where were we at? Um, just the, the, so, your first introduction to this photography, what fascinated you oh, about I it, did, other than I, being I a never, hopeless romantic. <laughs> I, I've always been that, but, um, and I've always loved, uh, I've always loved, I gotta be honest, I've always loved history, um, but I never owned a camera back in 2012. Never had an interest in photography. Uh, nothing like that. And I saw this and I tell I've told this story a million times. I, I saw this photograph online of a motorcycle. This gentleman, Paul DeLorenz, was going across the United States taking wet plates of vintage motorcycles. And it wasn't anything spectacular. That I, you know, I don't know why did it, you know, as you're scrolling down Facebook and you're just seeing image after image after image. I mean, you, you, you can see like I could have missed this image. I mean, why did that image appear on that particular day to me? And then I just asked the question, what is that? And Paul explained to me what it was. And I just thought, I have to try this. So I went back to Paul and I said, well, I'd love to try this. He says, well, Shane, um, and we talk about the story and he laughs all the time. Um, he says, well, you're a photographer. He says, well, no, I don't own a camera, never have. And he says, well, I've been a photographer for over two decades and I have a very difficult time figuring this out. There's no way a, a non-photographer will ever figure out wet plating. And within 45 days of that conversation, I made my first portrait of my brother, Chad, on October 4, 2012. And I, I've made 4,187 cents. So it's taken me nine years to make 4,000, nearly 4,200 plates. Think about that for a moment. You hire a wedding photographer, you're going to get married this weekend. You hire a wedding photographer, they're going to take 4,200 shots. They're going to take 4,200 digital images. It's taken me nearly a de decade to do that same, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of work to get to that. And, and you know, you could take 4,200 images in my, dark, you know, in my studio here in a couple of hours. Definitely. That reaction that you say you had to that motorcycle dude was my first reaction looking at your photo photography. I was like mm. blown away. I, I would like mm. to, I think maybe it's the same. I don't know, obviously, exactly mm. what you felt, but it was a friend of mine. I had missed the post. I, I had no idea Jordan had these done. And a friend of mine said, hey, did you know that he had this old photo done? And, and they showed me, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that is incredible. I was blown away. Well, the, the, it, it it provides. The process provides. If you, you know, you, you know, 
Um, it's not so much about me being the photographer sometimes. It's sometimes I have to, you know, Frederick Scott Archer invented this. So can you imagine in 1851? And George was just blown away when I was explaining this process to him, explaining how you, you know, the bromide salt and the clodion attracts silver molecules out of a silver nitrate bath that makes a photosensitive plate. And then we have to develop it. And, and, and I was explaining this all to him. And he says, Shane, I just can't. How did this man figure this out 171 years ago? I mean, it must, it was like, it was in actually, um, it was actually in a scientific journal called The Chemist in 1851. So this was not like in, there was no, you know, there was no photo journals or, you know, people didn't really know about photography. There was the daguerreotypes before, about a decade before, but there, there wasn't that kind of thing. This was, this was such a huge scientific achievement for humankind, the figuring out of these photographs that normal people were able to get their photographs taken for the first time. You, got, you have to understand that if, if Chase, if you wanted a portrait of yourself, you'd have to hire a painter. I mean, this is, this is a long time ago. So it, it was a huge achievement, but Jordan was just taken back after I showed it to him. And I explained to him that I'm, I'm doing exactly, um, you know, what Archer told us to do. Um, he was just blown away by the technology. I mean, it's if I can impress Jordan Peterson in modern day and he knows all about computers and monitors and LCD screens and, and video and videography and all the things that he knows, right? I mean, all of us, us modern day people, all these, we know all these technologies, motion pictures and stuff like that. Didn't have anything of that back then. Can you about imagine how they must have felt when I rolled up with my my horse and buggy to one of these tribes in North Dakota and took a picture of the chief? And then they saw that image come to life of the chief. And then they saw that's where this, the name Shadow Catchers, the Native Americans. And I've been given the Hadatsa name by Calvin Grinnell, the Hadatsa elder. I'm called Mishde Akagoche, which is a shadow catcher. I, but I they called that. all photographers. All photographers were called shadow catchers because the Native Americans actually thought I was stealing a piece of their soul. So because I, so you're the chief. I come and I take your picture. I got it on this little piece of glass or tin. And then I get on my, my buggy again and leave with that. I have it. That 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 image, that impression of your chief, is still in that photographer's possession, and he's going down the road. They 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 really struggled with it. But if you if you put yourself in their shoes and you think about this technology, and you know, what else? It's magic. And that's what Jordan said too. He said, "This is just this is a magical transformation." So there is. I don't know who quoted this, but someone quoted, "Any superior technology cannot be discerned for magic." That means if it's a piece oh. of technology, it, it, who said this? Uh, I know Peterson has talked about it at least maybe once. I don't know. Uh, if he oh, said is he, I, but I, know I he didn't know that. No, maybe he did. It's in that realm. Of, yeah, I'll have to look it up. You can look it up too. Um, if, if you need to take a second, yeah, it's not a problem. To no, no, no. Just do some. But it's um, the fact is is that you know if it's um, if it's a piece of technology that appears to the person viewing it, it's magical. Um, it's superior, and and that's what he witnessed, and that's what I've I've known for a fact for ten years. So it was so rewarding to Arthur C. Clarke. Yes. Yep. Yes, okay. that's who said it. Okay. That's who said it. Yeah, and I did I did not know that Jordan had quoted that as well. If he hadn't, he's talked. He kind of borders that realm of known and unknown. That that type of quote yeah, would yeah, yeah. fit into very well if he hadn't. You know. Um, do you know what Arthur yeah. C. Clarke is known for? I don't know much about him. I, I don't. Okay. I don't. What he would he's known for? That's a I have quote. to go back and look. But the, I, I I got these silly quotes in my head every once in a while that makes you know what I mean. That's just seem poignant for whatever, um, whatever we're talking about. But you know, if 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 Jordan was just thoroughly blown away by the process in 2022, you know, can you imagine what Abraham Lincoln was thinking? Right. You know what I mean? You know what was Abraham think? I mean. There was nothing like it on the planet. There was no, I mean, this was, and, and to this day, honestly, this photography and, and the daguerreotype photography and some of the other photographies that followed in the next 50 years after wet plating, um, they're still some of the most impressive inventions man has ever. You can't have your iPhone camera in your back pocket without Frederick Scott Archer. You know, and you can look at it that way. You, 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 have, to, you have to pay your respect to these, these people that came before us and gave us these gifts. And sure, it was incremental. I mean, we've learned, you know what I mean? Like we, we, we you know, we, then we went to film and then, then we went to digital. I mean, it, it, it's not like it happened overnight, but you can't get to those, you could argue that you can't get to those later technologies, that technology that's sitting in, 
1851, there was, you had to be a photographer in order to take pictures. You were just weren't, you know, the baker down the street. Oh, I'm just going to go get myself a camera today and start taking pictures. It's not how it was. I mean, that wasn't even a, the fact until the 1900s when Kodak invented some of those uh, first uh, brownie cameras and stuff where you could actually, I don't know if you know this, but you'd buy a camera from brownie with film in it. You t- it have 20 exposures or 50 exposures, whatever it had in it. So you'd buy your, you go to your shop, your, your mercantile guy, you buy this camera. It was already loaded with film. You go take your 50 shots. You send the whole camera and the film back into Kodak. They received it in the mail. They processed your film, loaded it back up with you, sent your camera back and sent you film. I mean, we've come a long way. Absolutely. It's, fa- it's fascinating, right? Oh, the history is so fascinating. History is just completely unbelievably fascinating i agree there was a um they used to do they used to make albumin and they used to use eggs in in different print processes at kodak eastman and and what you do is um you, you use egg whites and you use silver nitrate and you can make this this film okay kodak eastman at one point in their history was cracking two hundred thousand eggs a day <laughs> well, that's <laughs> wild i had no idea <laughs> yeah yeah and, and it might not, that number not be maybe wrong. Maybe it's three hundred, maybe it's hundred thousand. But it's it was a substantial amount of albumin was being um, wow. was being used in photography in, in the Victorian, you know, in the early nineteen hundreds in the Victorian era. So, yeah, it's um, there's a lot to there's a lot to go. But um, it, it's fun. It's rewarding. Um, and uh, you know, there's only a thousand of us that can do this. And and I was the first one to ever capture Jordan Peterson. I may be the last one to ever. You know, unless one of my brothers and sisters corrals him somewhere, um, you know, I'm going to be the only person ever to take a wet plate with Jordan Peterson. And I, you know, I, that's fun to have to hang your hat on that. And that the fact is anyone who comes in when Evander Holyfield came in, I mean, he had never seen the process. He was thoroughly impressed. Deb Hallen, when she came in, when when I saw Greta Thunberg, when I took the Greta Thunberg's uh, portrait down at Standing Rock, um, you know, her and her dad were just blown away by it. So it's, 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 it's a cool process and, and it's a special process. And the people, if you, and I, and, and the other thing I explained to Jordan, and that's why we didn't get as many plates as we could have possibly get. And cause I, I wanted to have an experience because Jordan now spending an hour and 45 minutes with me, me doing my song and dance for him, explaining how the process works. He has a better appreciation for what it is that I'm doing for him than if I just said, well, just sit your butt down. I'm going to do my thing here and don't worry about what I'm doing. You know, there, that never happens with me. I'm always teaching. I, I've, I've got uh, 20 students coming out next week um, from uh, Minnesota State. So, um, you know, I'm always teaching and I always if I'm going to take your picture, you're going to know what I'm doing. This is I'm going to pull back the shades. Um, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, and I'm going to show you what's behind the scenes, and I'm going to I'm going to give you an appreciation because then you take this away, and then you know, uh, hey, well, this is different, and then and now uh, these students, these young students that are coming, they don't know anything about analog photography. They don't. They never had. You know, they don't remember their dad using film. You know, film cameras. I mean, that whole concept of loading film and not exposing your film. You know, they 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 didn't have that. These, these younger kids. And because, you know, the digital cameras have been around for 25, 30 years now already. So, um, the, you know, they need to understand that there's analog, that there's, there's photography that exists in forms other than the zeros and ones in a long data file, Jake, somewhere. That, there, you know, these, this exists. And that's, it was a really good question of you to ask me if I give them a print or a scan or the original plate. They get the original plate. And that's because that's the work. That's the analog. That's the, if you break it, I got these three plates and they're just 10 feet from me here. If I tonight break them somehow, knock them off the table, whatever, they're lost. I, I do, there's no absolute way to reproduce them. I've got scans of them, but it's, it doesn't do anything for, for me. And it doesn't really do much for the history books. We need to get these original plates. So my, I, I've already reached out to Smithsonian who's got my uh, my plate of Evander Holyfield in the portrait gallery. I've already reached out to the libraries who's got my plate of Greta Thunberg in their, in their gallery. So those are the two other, and I've reached out to the Royal Photographic Society in the United Kingdom, the oldest photographic society in, in the world. And um, they have a plate of mine as well. So I, I've reached out to some of my, some of these uh, larger archives that already are possessed on my work, just saying, do you want a Jordan Peterson? And, and we'll see whether or not, uh, you know, I can find a home for these, but I'll, I'll keep looking around. And, and if not, um, 
the State Historical Society of North Dakota has over 700 of my plates. So the, the one, I, I would think a Jordan plate is going to end up here in North Dakota as well. Wow, that reminds me of just kind of, of you sending the phys physical copies of plates everywhere of that space shuttle or, or something that was sent out into the ether with a golden mm. disc of all yes, of yes. our yep. stuff etched into it yep. to just save yep. and record our civilization for whoever, somewhere, somewhen finds it. And yeah, analog analog does that, and that disc was. It's, I, I want to say it was made out of gold and. And it will be, I don't know if you know about these heavy metals. So my images are made out of pure silver. Okay. Okay. So, so the image that you see, the images you've seen, you've seen scans of the plates. Um, those are made out of pure silver. Well, pure silver is a heavy metal. So we have our nickels, we have our coppers, we have our golds, we've got our platinums, we've got our silvers. You know, we have the heavy, heavy metals. Do you know, are those heavy metals um, um, native to earth? I don't know. I have no idea. They're not. They're not. So in the formation of Earth, you know, I don't know how much you know about astronomy and stuff, but um, in the formation of Earth, it was a cooling process where these clumps that like um, gravity brought all this together. And that's why we have these planets and stuff. Um, but there was never enough energy in the formation of Earth to ever form, ever form any of our heavy metals. That's why we can't to this day just, you know, you know, use a machine or something to make gold. There, there's not, and if we could, the amount of energy needed to make that gold would way surpass the value of that gold. So the only place that these heavy metals in our entire universe are ever created is when a supernova explodes. So a star runs out of its hydrogen and helium, eventually becomes a, a red giant and just blows up. At that moment, that's when enough energy is created to make these heavy metals. So all these heavy metals that are here, and even these images, the, the images of Jordan Peterson made out of silver, those were brought here by e a meteorite, asteroids, or comets. Wow. Crashing into Earth. That's why you have in San Francisco, the gold rushes in San Francisco, and there's some up in Canada. That's the, 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 that There's nothing special about those. And it's not like you can dig, dig down deeper and find more gold. You know, these are pockets of gold and pockets of nickel because, you know, this meteor or whatever that had a, a large content of nickel that it picked up as it passed through, um, you know, passed through this place where this uh, star exploded. It picked these heavy metals up and then it crashes into earth and spreads its debris. The rivers collect it and put it together and then we're there panning it and we're getting this gold um, and the silver. That's the only way it gets here. So, you know, everything starred us, but it's really miraculous. You know, you see these plates behind me on the wall here. These are all made out of silver. And all of those were brought here on meteorites, comets, or asteroids. And wow. that just, isn't that cool? I mean, you're combining everything from history to science and just all this sort of little ends of all these fields to create some magical work that is what I do is fascinating. I tell the students about the archivability, so I'll really quickly explain. There's two very important properties of wet plate. It's archivability and it's resolution. So I tell the students, I have a silver spoon here and I take it, I set it on the ground and I'd say, if I come back 500 years from now, what's on? And the answer must be a silver spoon, right? If I come back, if I set a silver spoon on the ground and come back 500 years from now, what's on the ground? A silver spoon. So these plates will be here thousands of years from now, that, that silver does not degrade. It may tarnish, and I, and I varnish my plates to protect from oxygen from getting to them so that they don't tarnish. Um, but that's a very important um, step in this process. The last step is to varnish them so that they figured out in the Victorian era that if you uh, lock the oxygen out, the oxygen can't get to the silver molecules and you don't get tarnishing. So that's one of the things. And the other thing about wet plating is the resolution. So I'm, um, you know, we talk about megapixels and crap like that with their digital cameras. It's, it's child's play. If I start stacking molecules, I'm right in molecules of silver, understand, right? My silver nitrate is molecules of silver. If I start stacking them up, Chase, on the tip of my finger, how many do I have to clump together in order for you to see it with the human eye? Any ideas? It'd be a big power, to, power to a million to see all those molecules. It's a billion. Yeah. Two, one to two billion molecules, okay? I'm writing in those molecules. I'm writing my images in those molecules. So you can take my Jordan plate, any one of them, go to any university in the, in the world, ask for their most high powered microscope, put this plate under their microscope 
and you cannot get to the pixel of grain that makes it the image. So not only did I take the, the photographs of Jordan Peterson that will last any other photograph I've ever taken of the man, I've taken the most high resolution photographs that have ever been taken of him and will ever be taken of him in his life. And I'm using 170 year old technology to do so. You're saying it's the highest resolution. Highest resolution photographs man has ever made. You need an electron microscope, 10,000 power to see the clumping of the silvers that make up the Jordan Peterson plates. Do you know back in uh, film days, you could, you know, even just with a magnifying glass, like a 5X or 10X, mag just a magnifying glass, you could get to the grain. You could look at it, uh, you know, you could look at a negative with just a magnifying glass in the human eye and you could see the grains that make up the image. You kind of, kind of like in the newspaper, you know, you see these grainy photographs, you know, you see these newspaper ads, you, if you look real close, you can see the dots that make it up. You don't, there's no dots. I mean, these dots are, you need a 10,000 power electron microscope to find the dots that make up the image. There's no, there's no comparison in the digital realm. And there's no comparison in the, in the, in the, uh, in the film realm either. These, these and the daguerreotypes. And I, and I've seen the, the some college did an analysis. I've seen the, I've seen the research paper on, on this and showed the examples and, and why these are the most high powered micro, um, photographs, the highest resolution photographs man has ever created. And we abandoned it in 1885. Absolutely. When you fall asleep at night, do you dream about this type of stuff? I have fallen in this rabbit hole that I'm running down. Um, there's no bottom yet. And I'm in, I'm on, in nearly a decade. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep, I'm going to see where this takes me. And I'm, I'm 53 now. So I didn't even find, I have, I have no talents whatsoever. Um, I can't paint. I don't, I can't sing. I can't play a musical instrument. Um, there's just really nothing um, sports. I've never been good at sports. And it took me 44 years to find out something that I'm, I actually, this is, I can, and I know it's maybe corny to you or, or anyone listening. Um, this is why I was put here. I just took me over four decades decades to figure this figure it fucking out it took me four Fair decades enough. to figure this out like like gary v says you know if you're 40 you're still young if you're 45 yeah. you're still young you still have time he, it's his, he's always saying that you're young there's a lot i want to do though yeah there's a lot i want to do yet so you know but as an oncology nurse i'm also you know i've got my background as an oncology nurse and um i know that it's finite i know that there's there's only so much you know this is this will end sometime and and then um, I find this um, I find this relief in knowing that this work that I'm making and I'm bringing it into the world, it's going to be here after I'm gone. I mean, when else can you say that, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, when else can you say that? And these people that trust me, Jordan and all, you're not, you don't have to just be famous or anything like Jordan Peterson. Any of the people of the 4,168 people that have trusted my lens over the last decade, all of those people are going to be remembered. And because I'm making these images that are going to be going to be here for a long time. So there's a kind of a duty and um, I feel a duty um, to that. And I, I certainly um, the pressure that I feel going into like, the, you know, going to Minneapolis, traveling 400 miles one way with everything, you know, and having that one time there's a um, Carl was there with me, took a shot of me. I don't know if you saw it. I'm, I'm sitting there. I was waiting for Jordan. I knew it was eminent. It was 15 minutes to 11, right? He's coming in 15 minutes. And I'm just like in the corner. <laughs> I got everything ready. We already did a test shot. And I was just like, the weight of the world was on my shoulders for some reason. It's just like, I have got to do this. Wow. And, 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 you know, it's not like regular photography, which you can count on, you know, you load up your film camera, the damn film cam is going to give you what you need, you know, unless you really botch it. That's not the case with this process. I mean, things can go. I could there. There's a possibility um, that I couldn't have got any images that day. So finicky this process is. So you never you know how you say I, I'm going to take a photograph. Mm -hmm. You never take a photograph. You never take a wet plate. You're given a wet plate. Wow. I just had to be given. And I don't when I went to Carl and I talked, I said, Carl, we're not going to be selfish here. We're going to maybe take four or five plates. We only need one that we can hang our hat on. We only need one good one. That's all. I don't want to think that everything that everything I'm going to do with Jordan and all the stress and everything, you know, being away and using these bulbs that I'd rather use the natural light. And he's just, you know, I, all I said is I want one plate. You're, and you're I, I think I got just that. talking about it. <laughs> yeah. I, and and I think we, you know, 
the the, the plate, um, a lifetime of contemplation with him in his hands, and and a uh, Carl Jung, you know, he's a, a kind of a a, a hero of of Jordan's. Um, I, I had a picture of Carl there, a historic picture. And if you just look at Carl Jung portrait or something, yeah. you'll see this portrait. You'll see a little bit of what we were going for in the Jordan because, and, and Jordan just loved that idea that um, that we were paying a little bit of homage to Jung. And he said, I know that, I know that photo, Shane. I said, well, you know, it's, it was, has to do with his hands and he has his glasses on and stuff. But the point was, is that, um, you know, I wanted to show the inspiration. I wanted to give Jordan some kind of inspiration. And I wanted him to understand that whoever the photographer was who took that photograph of Jung that you admire, right? Because there was a photographer, and I don't know who he is. I could research it. But there was a photographer that did that for Jung, right? I want to do that for you, Jordan. There was that, um, remember that interview that got like 48 million views? Jordan's with that, the, the feminist from in the UK, GQ yep. magazine. Yep, very well. Wonder, wonderful. I, it was a really, um, it was a really good interview, but it was a really, you know, it was a, 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 a very contested interview. But the last thing that she said to him, do you know what the last question she said to Astrid? What did she say? I've watched the video many times. Maybe I'm picking up the clip. I don't, I don't remember the last thing she said, no. Yeah, well, it's an hour and 45 minute, if I, I, I'm not mistaken, it's 48 million views. It's like an hour and 45 minute long video. But her last question to Jordan is, how do you want to be remembered? And Jordan answered, wow. I want to be remembered as an honest person. And when Jordan came in and I shook his hand, I, I said, Jordan, do you remember the conversation? And obviously he knows, remembers the conversation. Yeah, I'm sure. And I said, do you remember the, do you remember the last question she asked? And he says, no, I don't remember Shane. And I said, she asked you if you, what you wanted to be remembered as, and you said an honest person. And I said, Jordan, what I want to do today is take an honest photograph. Of you. And that's how we started the, our hour and 45 minutes off. That's beautiful. That is one of the most beautiful stories I've ever heard, I think. At least of, of Jordan, <laughs> no. if not of anyone. That's gorgeous. I love that. Yeah. Talk about romanticism. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He and, and and you know, the other thing that I can share about him and um and I've gotten a lot of flack this last week. I mean a lot of flack. Um they've even, you know, people even uttered the words cancel culture against me um for take just taking this man's photograph. Um one thing I can share with you, um, I'm, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. You know, I've been around the block. Um, he is who he is. He is who you, if you read his books, if you've watched his, if you watched his lectures, if you watched his, you know, his podcasts, if you, if you've watched anything about Jordan Peterson, he is that man. There's no facade there. He was humble. He, I, I, you know, he was soft spoken, which I, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, he was gracious. He was, you know, he was interested in me. He wanted to know my story. He wanted to know, well, would you, you know, where'd you come from, Shane? He wanted to know Carl's story. Um, it was just us three in the, in, in, in you know, um, in Jordan's bodyguard in the room at the time. Um, so, you know, he, but he was, he was invested in who we were. And, you know, that, I mean, it speaks volumes. I mean, why does he care? He cared. He knew that I was doing something, trying to, I, I travel all this way to do something nice for him. And he just was interested in who I was as a person. And, um, you know, so he's, um, you know, he's, he's just a, a, a very nice man. And, uh, you know, to get an hour, you know, we went to his talk that night. And that, you know, that night, um, do you know what his talk was about? Mm -mm, no. So we went to his show that night. He gave his VIP behind, uh, backstage passes and everything. Yeah. And, um it was about love and marriage. You know what I mean? Like love and marriage. This was two hours, him and his wife, his wife got opened up that night and his whole talk was on love and marriage. There was never deviated from that. He never took that platform in front of 3000, you know, packed house there. Um, he didn't, there was no other, he had one motive. It was to tell us about love and marriage. And I sat there and I've been married for 21 years with my wife, Bonnie. And, and I just, you know, I just yearned for her to be there with me after listening to him talk. I mean, what a topic, right? This wasn't some politically charged conversation that he was having in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He wanted to tell us about love and marriage and how we can improve love in our life and improve if, you know, if, if there's, we're having issues in our marriage, which everyone who's ever been married has. I mean, you, it's impossible, right? It's part of the whole, it's the game. 
It's the game is getting through this stuff together. I mean, he, so he talked for, and he just inspired the entire career. And that's what his topic was. It was none of this controversial stuff that everyone wants to just um, slam him for. And I, I don't want to get off too off my topic, but no, I'm, I'm giving you my, no, I'm giving you my perspective as a complete stranger, but I, I don't consider Jordan a stranger anymore. Um, no, and you, you um, can, he, is, he is, Say it and talk about whatever whatever you like. It, it's all of interest to me, and, I, yeah. I'll, and I'll ask about it. So I'm not here. Well, to I, 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 I photography just, or anything. It's it's all of it. Yeah, no, yeah, but no. I just wanted to you know let people know what you know. People have asked me what he wants, what what is he about. But you know, I I, I shared those photographs on Facebook, and then on on uh, you know, and then Jordan shared it on um, Instagram, and then he shared it on Twitter. And I think his Instagram one got like eighty thousand likes or something like that, and I don't know how many thousands of shares. And but the onslaught, the actual and I mean, I've lost two friends, mm -hmm. close friends. I lost a sitter that she's been into my studio four times. We create we've created beautiful artwork together. She spent countless hours with me. She knows who I am. And she text messages me like 10 minutes after me posted. And she says, I, I can't uh, I can't come into your studio anymore out of integrity. Wow. And I'm like, I, I took a photograph of a man. You know, you may not agree with the man or you, there may be some, you know, um, but you know who I am, right? She knows who I am. She's my friend. And, and she canceled her shoot. I got to shoot. I got props and everything set up for her in April and she canceled this because of me taking a photograph of Jordan Peterson, wow. which is absolutely insanity to me. Um, insanity. So I, I felt like my job was to, to me, Jordan Peterson, and, and not only Jordan Peterson, a lot of people deserve to have their portrait taken in this process because, you know, it's something that you can associate the portrait with his work. So he's got a, you know, the portrait, he can hang his body of work off this portrait now. There, there's going to be that Jung photograph, you know, the photograph that Jordan knows of Jung, um, you know, th that's what I tried to do, Jordan. And, and, and I, whether or not I did that, Chase, I don't know that. You know, time's going to tell. It's, yeah. you know, it's going to be, some years, decades, maybe down the road, when it realizes that, well, that is that was an important photograph on that day, or that was an iconic photograph of the man. I, I'm not here to make that. That's got to be right. for someone else. And I'm you too, close, too close to my work. And you photograph Greta Thun Thunberg. People on the total other side right. of the spectrum, you know, just the same. So it's just funny how that works. My my my, my post, I made a meme that said, "The right came for me when I took Greta's." Thunberg's photograph and the left came to for me when I took Jordan Peterson's photograph and I said my camera tells the truth so if you if you look at that as a balance system right and I know Jordan kind of talks about that sometimes that everything kind of balances out there's always this positives and negatives and stuff I mean so if you got both of both does that put me right kind of in the middle I mean would, if you do the math am I not in the middle and shouldn't we try to be in the middle I mean, we don't have to agree with everything that's going on the right. We don't have to agree with everything that goes on the left. And I'm more, um, you know, left than I am right. Um, but it puts me in the middle. But to um, there was a, a famous photographer, Karsh. I don't know if you, um, you know who he is, but he, he was know. he's known for K-A-R-S-H. And um, he is known probably for the most important photographer, portrait photographer in the 20th century, okay? And guess who he took a photograph of? I'm on his website, well, maybe not his website, but he took a, him now is Churchill? He, he, he took a, yeah, well, he took a photograph of Churchill, but he took, um, he took a picture of Fidel Castro, and then he took a picture of Mother Teresa. Wow. So, I mean, are those two opposed? Yeah. If the number one photographer or one of the most respected photographers of the 20th century can take those two people's portraits, why, why should I not be able to take Greta's and why should I not be able to take Jordan's? Not that I think that they're, you know what I mean? I, I, I know that Jordan does not agree with climate change or he, he thinks that the science is out. I mean, I, I've, I've done enough. I mean, that's what he, he'll tell you. And if he was here sitting next to me, he would tell me why. And, and you know, um, But I, we don't have to all agree on everything. We don't have to all agree on everything.
but we shouldn't be this this cancelture and this this thought of oh i'm gonna unfriend you it, it was like i want to say three thousand followers i lost that first day mm-hmm. what was your what was as your soon game as i had, shared have you had people similar to me come out and say oh uh now i found your work and i love your work rather than leaving oh and, and and i'll I, and i'll be, uh, yeah absolutely and then especially after because i was um i was losing the followers and then you know, I, I messaged Michaela, and, I, and she says, "Shane, don't worry about, the, don't worry about the followers." And I wasn't really worried because I could care less. I mean, I, I don't do this for anyone else, to be honest with you. And um, that's always been my position. I, I make these portraits for myself. I can't, I can't make them for anyone else. If I, if I start making them for someone else, I get in a situation where people are going to try to censor me or, you know, tell me who I can't take a fucking photograph of. Excuse my language, but no I mean, who, who, are, who are you, who are you to say that I can't take a photograph of someone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, when Jordan started sharing and stuff, and I, I'm going to be completely honest with this, it was nine positives to one negative, nine positives to one negative. So the the, the amount of um, kind words and the people reaching out to me and 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 uh, telling me that, that these are amazing photographs and that they're so happy that I was able to do this and I'd never known about wet plating before and thanks for doing this for Jordan and his family and his history and I mean it was nine to one but it's that one. You know that yeah, one vicious. out of ten. ten. Oh, oh, they they've got they've got a they've got a and um, and um, and and I saw it. I mean, when I took it, Greta when I took Greta Thunberg's portrait, I was going to. I've got large installations in my hometown here. I was born and raised in Bismarck, North Dakota, by the way. So I've got these large installations, and I was going to gift. A, 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 a eight foot tall, uh, I found a building, a baker's, you know, the landlords. Yeah, Shane, we love your work. Go ahead and we'll blow this eight feet up. This p- picture standing for us all with Greta Thunberg. We'll blow it up and put it on the, on the bakery wall. And there was boycotts. They were going to put the company, they were going to put the baker out of business. Wow. And then they egged, they egged my work across the street. Liberty trudges through injustice, which shows Lady Liberty, like leading the people through all these injustices. Is my is, is a big and anyone can look up bulk which um liberty trudges through injustice you'll see the image but they egged that portrait or that large installation across the street and not only did they egg it they threw the egg kids face so my children abby and grayson were in that piece that's who they egged on on that piece wow. so then greta was not getting put in and there was like 150 some newspaper articles around the world ran this story about my work being boycotted out of my home, my home city. And then Fargo said, we'll t- take it. And they came to my grace, my, 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 uh, my um, came to my uh, aid. And so Greta, the large installation went to Fargo. But then again, someone from Bismarck traveled to Fargo and egged that one there too. And I had to replace, so I had to, I had to replace that. So it was vandalized and destroyed as well. So I, I've seen it from both sides. Wow. And it's ugly and it's ugly. And what what hasn't changed here? What what hasn't changed with these both these scenarios? Me, yeah, I haven't changed at all. I'm the same. I'm the same damn person both times. And so how can I be? How can I be the the, the devil to both of these 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 uh, these sides? I, right, I, 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 I refuse. I refuse. That's the, the weird thing about photography, not that I have too much experience in it, but yeah, all you are doing is capturing what's there. You know, it's and, not and, creating anything new that's your own that can poke at people. It's just you're taking what's there, you know. And, and, that, and that's, what, that's how I shared it. But, but, but then I, I, this lady came at me, and do you know what she said to me? She goes, I, I understand that you're just taking a photograph, but that's not what you're doing. You said that you like his book. And I said... I do like his book. I've read 12 Rules for Life more than once. I've given my 17-year-old son a copy of his book. What is So now I can't even tell you that as a grown adult, I can't tell you, Chase, by the way, I recommend this book. Yeah, no, how dare you. Read, too much. You've read the book. You've, you've read the book, right? Now, yep. read the book. I've, I've told these people that have opposed this particular, and I'm, I'm, only, ta- I'm only talking about against the left right now because we're talking about Jordan Peterson, I understand. I had I had death threats when the right was coming after me. Yeah. Okay. I had calls in the middle of the night. I've had I had someone when I took Greta's photograph, I was at a restaurant and I was sitting there and the waiter came over, are you Mr. Balkwitch? I go, yeah, there's a phone call for you. Like when's the last wow. time someone called there's a phone call for you. 
they brought the phone over to me at the restaurant and there was someone breathing heavy in the phone. We know where you're at. Wow. What was that like? So, so everyone at the table was like, you know what I mean? Like uh, I lived in 10, eight, 10 years in LA. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, I've been around, I don't, I don't get intimidated. I'm, you I'm were not, in LA at that time. You weren't in Bismarck. North no, Dakota. no, 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 no. I was, I no. I'm just saying I've been around. I was at home. I was in Bismarck, North Dakota with my wife and four friends having dinner. And there's someone making, shooting, a shooting a bullet over the vow. Wow. Of, of our table. And everyone at the table was just like, it's, you know, they knew what, what was implied. You know, they knew what was implied. And I was sitting there, you know, with my, I was looking at the door. So I was watching the door. I don't, you know, it, it's not hard to find who I am. Um, they knew where I was at that night and they, they made a, a threat over the phone. Um, so that's when I did the Greta thing. So where were we at? Um, I got sidetracked here. So I'm not... Um, so I, I've told these people, read the book. So I took the photograph, but then I promoted Jordan by saying, I told someone just in, the, in a post. It wasn't right. like I did a post that said, here's the front cover of 12 Rules for Life, read this. I didn't do that. I took its portrait, but then someone asked me, well, I don't know much about Jordan. I said, well, read 12 Rules for Life. I would recommend oh, that one, sure, that's my favorite. Yeah. So I just said, read that book. And then, then they came at me for saying, well, you're promoting Jordan now by just saying that I like a book. It's not fucking Mein Kampf. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Is it? No, it is not. Is it? <laughs> no, it is not. Oh, wow. Go, go, go through that book and you tell me what's offensive in that book. And then the you lobsters. tell me the what, is the pur what, what is the purpose of this book? This purpose of the entire book was to help people. Yeah, I know. It's to help people. <laughs> Rules for life. It's to help people. That it starts with lobster. That bastard. That bastard. Jordan Peterson tried to help people. You know, it's just a facade. It's just. It a, it's just his. You know, it's just. He, it's just his way to. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's just. He's just pulling the wool over all of us blind people's eyes. Bullshit. Oh, I don't. Geez, I don't Louise. buy it. So. Wow. So it's been. It's been interesting, and um, you know, but but Kayla, you know, she was really supportive behind the scenes. She said. Shane, don't worry about it. We'll um, and she knew as soon as Jordan posted it that um, you know that someone else and it, it and again it, you hate to be in this side that side thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm now I'm waiting for what Chase? I'm waiting for the right to come to my aid. Yeah. <laughs> after after <laughs> now I'm waiting for the right right now. Now they're my they're my saviors riding mm -hmm. in on the horse. Oh, we're gonna tell Shane that he did such a great job. Yeah. And now the left's out for me. And now the left's, you know, they want to cancel culture me. Oh, jeez, Come on. Louise. Yeah, it I've makes been... no sense. Wow. That, that's just, that's lopsided. And it's hilarious to see that perspective because very few people are in that, that situation, really. Yeah, but think oh. about this, though. How many millions of photographs of Jordan have been taken? Millions. Oh, millions. You know that there's been millions. Millions. Is everyone else getting, everyone who's ever taken a photograph of Jordan getting this flack? No, not they're like not. <laughs> I'm getting this flack. You know why? Because the photographs that I took, they're they're special. They're important. They're very the they're very special. Absolutely. They're they're, 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 they're important. And, and I'm not again. It has nothing to do with me as a photographer, my talent or anything. I'm taking my you know just throw that out the door because I I know photographers and there's some badass photographers in this world. I'm not mm -hmm. one of them. But anyway, my point is is that they you know people have taken all kinds of photographs and done selfies with. Jordan and, and millions of photographs of this man. So why are my photographs bringing, you know, why is this, I'm bringing this attention. You're, you're too good, Shane. You're too good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, it depends on who you talk to, but yeah, apparently um, I did think it was funny. Just way back. You mentioned you drive an H3 Hummer and you were going to the university, university of Mary. Uh, I'm, one of the mm -hmm. first cars I ever drove because you can drive at 14 in South Dakota was an H3 Hummer. It was my mom's H3 Hummer. So Great vehicles. Do you know I got? Do you know? Do I have one? Because no. my dark room fits perfectly in the back of it. That's why. Like this, this my dark room. That's just boom, perfectly in the back. I work right out of it, so I could just drive up when I when when I had that. You know, I they told me Greta. I only had fifteen minutes with Greta. You know, I wasn't gonna make that. I wasn't gonna make that mistake. So I made the mistake with Greta. I said, if you can give me fifteen minutes with Greta, I will get that portrait for us. And that was a mistake. 
because I got there and Greta comes walking out and her, her dad says, we only got, we only got 50, we only have time for one picture. And my heart just sunk. Like Chase, it's like, shit, I don't even, you know, is this even good? Am I going to get the exposure right? Here's this girl sitting out in the middle of natural daylight in the sun. I don't know what the UV is doing. I didn't have any time for, um, they, they moved up my appointment with her. So I had no time to do a test shot or anything. It was all just gut check. And so we, so I thought, okay, if I'm only going to get one portrait of Greta, I took two portraits that day. I want to get, I, I, it has to be an iconic one of just her face. It's got it. You got to be able to look at it and say, that's Greta. And that's what it's called. It was called Greta. And it's just, a, I pushed her all the way back in a, in a, on a chair into a middle of this fern tree and took her portrait. And then when that portrait came to life in the fixer, and I don't know if you saw the video of Jordan, you know, like when the image comes to life, I don't know if you saw that yet. I have it on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when the image comes to life, her dad was standing to my right and Greta was on a knee to my left. We were working on, on a tray on, in the grass and they saw that image come to life. It was this collective wall. And I took that moment. I looked up at Savante, her father. And I said, can I have one more? And he said, absolutely. And that's when we went back and we did Greta Thunberg, the, the one that got 3 million shares and likes on social media, standing for us all with Greta Thunberg, the most, um, probably the most viewed modern day web plate of all time. Um, you know, I, I only got that opportunity because they were just like, just like Jordan was, they were mesmerized by this process. And he said, yeah, Shane, you can have, you can do one more. And then I was able to do creative and I was able to get back and I was able to get her full body and I was able to show the landscape behind her. Cause you know, she stands for, she stands for them, you know, the environment and stuff. So I would not have had that opportunity, but I wasn't with Jordan. It was, I was not going to say to Michaela, give me 15 minutes of Jordan. I was, I learned my lesson. So I said, can I have an hour? <laughs> and he gave me an hour and 45 minutes. He gave me an hour and Chills. 45 minutes. You know, he's just, uh, it, but it's his generous nature. It's just his generous nature. Oh, wow. Your stories keep getting better and better. You know, I talked to a photographer you know, a couple of weeks ago and he talked about how he used, I think, a regular, just a regular, you know, Nikon or something to get this great action yeah. shot of a wrestler. And, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and he knew the shot was coming and in the split second he was dialing his camera in, bing, 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 bam, got the one. And mm -hmm. just incredible to hear two polar it's, opposite photographers in different trades and that same gut check no time to, to look no time to study just different different technologies but but it's it's amazing how what he did in that moment and how what i do it's the same stuff it's the same stuff our instruments are different you know what i mean how we how we captured it but it's the same stuff it's the same kind of stuff and and photographers have been doing this for you know 170 75 years and um it's 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 um it's important stuff these photographs and i've and i've unfortunately i've had the um well unfortunately and fortunately uh, i've had the the opportunity to capture some people that have passed away um there was a pastor a, a, a brother of a good friend of mine um the editor of the bismarck tribune here in town and his brother came out one saturday afternoon and we spent a couple hours together i took his portrait and he passed away just a couple weeks ago and the first thing that they wanted was that we need a, a picture of of him for the casket and you know i'm overnighting this print down there so that they had it and and that's when my work really becomes important meaningful it's like after the per after after the person's gone and i and, and i've had Couple, you know, two handfuls of people that have passed away that I photographed. Um, and um, that's what the people that's family tell me. And that's when these images take on, you know, a, a life of their own, a meaning of their own. That's when all the work that I put into it the previous time to get that one image, that's when it shines. Um, in in those, those moments when the, the family's grieving and, and people want to remember. So um, that's all it is. And damn it. Jordan Peterson deserved to have his portrait taken. You know, he did. He does. He's, he's got a body of work. I don't give a shit if you don't like his, you know, some of his stances. I don't care. I don't care. Can, you, can I account for it? Chase, let me ask you. Let's yeah. say I've taken 4,000 portraits of different people. Let's just say that. Can I account for every thought of all those 4,000 people? No, absolutely. every no every thought that they and or, or how about this I'll, I'll account for every conversation that those four thousand people had in their previous be, before the photograph and then all I got to account for all their conversations and their thoughts after the portrait. Mm -mm. All those people, I'm responsible for that. <laughs> like I'm responsible for that. Like if one of my sitters becomes Adolf Hitler, 
It's not my fucking problem. Right? <laughs> right. And that's yeah. extreme. Right. But I but but I mean you know, but I I can't, I don't know. You know, I don't know what these people do in their lives. I, and I can't I can't be accountable. I to me taking their photograph does not mean I assume everything. And I'm I, I everything about I'm not just talking about Jordan, about Greta or you know, um anything that Evander Holyfield ever did bad in his life. I'm supposed to that that's a reflection on me now? Mm-hmm. How's that possible? And that's what I've been pushing back on this last these last 10 days or so, this last, you know, eight days or so, I've been pushing back against this. It's because I haven't changed. I'm the photographer. I'm I'm the same person I was before I met Jordan and I'm the same person after I met Jordan. I still have my beliefs, but I'm, I'm still the same caring person and the same person that, you know, if you were my friend before, how can you not be my friend afterwards? Mm-hmm. I have to question, were you even my friend before? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and it's crazy. And it sucks to, to question love. It, it and it sucks to question people that you you think you that care about you. Mm-hmm. You know, now all of a sudden you question everything. Like wh- who 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 does have my back? Who does care? You know what I mean? That I'm doing this. I, it does. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's all on me. I, I I'm I'm the one that has to care. Yeah. Well, I think you're doing a great job doing it. And it's, it's, oh, well. that as you know, uh, my fascination with your type of artwork doesn't change at all. And it's unfortunate. Some people mm. can miss, miss that of what you're doing. Yeah. Well, they, they would say that you like Jordan Peterson. I like Jordan Peterson. So, you know, we're in this little, this little cult together and, and, um, I don't, I'm not buying, I'm not buying any of it, mm-hmm. but I'm, there's not going to be a day that I'm not, if someone had me, if there's a book that you can think of that would you know help me if I'm struggling in life or if I want to improve my life or I want to do something, you know, I would recommend Jordan's book. And there's, you know, who's to say that I can't recommend Jordan's book? Right. But that's what they've tried to do. That's yeah. where I promoted promoted Jordan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks for those yeah. that specific story. That's I, I wanted to know about Jordan um, a little bit, but I, I got. All of it, which is awesome. Your yeah, yeah. And, and Mika- Mika- is a sweetheart, too. I mean, she's just really, really nice. And, you know, when she makes, you know, she, she said, we'll, we'll get it done, Shane. And then and she comes through and, and does that. It's 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 pretty remarkable because, you know, I, I thanked her immediately after he left. I, I messaged her. I said, Michaela, I just got done with your dad. And, you know, um, you had belief in a complete stranger. They don't. She didn't know who I am, mm-hmm. Chase. I mean, she had no idea. So she's setting, she's putting her, you know, she's trusting her father's time, which is probably pretty valuable, right? I mean, Jordan is probably pretty stretched, pretty thin right now. I mean, um, you know, he's got a lot of stuff on his plate. He's got a lot of important things and he's he's, he's got to um, do a lot of things that he's, he's trying to accomplish. And, and for her to trust in a complete stranger and to give me, you know, say, dad, will you go meet this photographer that I don't know anything about? You know, it, 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 the, what I can take from that is that sometimes we have to have trust in strangers. You know what I mean? There's yeah. still that good element out there. You, we can't just always be apprehensive or, or, or wonder what someone's motives are. Every once in a while, take a chance and maybe you'll get burned. Right. Maybe maybe you'll get burned. But when it when you don't get burned, you know, it, it's fun taking a chance on, on a complete stranger sometimes because you never know what you might you may who you may meet or what, what you may find out. And that's what I really, I really like about this story too, is that um, his family trusted in me and um, gave me this time with him. So I'm honored. That's a huge honor. Absolutely huge honor. I, I've had been fortunate enough to go to two of his lectures and, and shake his hand and, and meet him mm. just very briefly. I mean, they're filtering people through to get the photographs done. Yeah. And at the time I'd asked him if I could study with him at his university or study with him, you know, anywhere. Cause I'm just a college mm-hmm. kid. And if there's anyone to study with, He's the one I would want to, to study with. Um, yeah, he would. He, well, can you imagine his students and, and you know him having him as your professor and showing up on every Wednesday for you know an hour long lecture and he's telling you about. I've watched his lectures. I mean, he's been me recording his lectures since the '90s, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you can just sit there and like I watched one of his lectures today, and you just sit there because I, I I'm also a college student. I mean, I um, I had 12 years of college under my belt, and um, 
you know, as a student, you just sit there and just listen to him and what, uh, you know, what he's trying to convey. And, and I, I don't see this evilness. I don't see this, this spitefulness. I don't see this. I don't see any of the things that he's accused of in any of, I don't find any evidence of any of it. And, um, you know, and then, and then I was just reassured um, when I met him. So it's, it was, it was really good. Awesome. I don't know how much time you have. I do have a few questions on just history. And I've, I've got as much time as you want. Oh, I got as much time as you want, buddy. We can go four hours. Cool. No, no, I don't think we'll need that. Just your, where your fascination <laughs> with history comes from and your Northern Plains Native American project. Cause I, I bought your book and I'm so excited. To oh, some of those works. Oh yeah. 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 It's great. Did you buy the first volume or the second one? Ooh, I'm not sure. There's, 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 there's actually two. Where'd you buy it at? Uh, I'll have to pull up my on the website or... which one. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's two. Vo- so the, um, so we can go into. Um, well, my, my fascination with history is I've I've always been I've always been a history buff. I always like it's. It almost feels like I was born in the wrong time period. You know, like I, I just I've always loved the, the 1800s for some reason, and, and maybe that's what was uh, drew me to this photographic process too. When I first looked into it, it's like here's this archaic process that really nobody practices anymore. You'd be a complete moron to actually try to do this. And, um, you know, I, so I, I really liked it. And, and then I, then I started looking at some of those iconic images, like you had said of the civil war and stuff and, and the photographs of, um, you know, of sitting bowl and of Custer and there's all kinds of, you know, Abraham Lincoln's photographs. And, and, you know, then I find out that those were wet plates. And as soon as I found out that those were what, what this is, I was looking at, it just seemed to like draw me in. So um, Northern Plains, Native Americans, a modern wet plate perspective. I don't know why I was asking about the books because I had a, a first book. It's available on Amazon. Again, it's Northern Plains, Native Americans, a modern wet plate perspective. So that's I volume the, one. I have the second one. It says I okay. It. And that's on a boat. I just checked today. That's in the middle of the ocean for Black Bear right now. So it's supposed to arrive in Chicago on the 21st. Probably take a week to get to me and then I'll, I'll ship it out to you right away. So, um, in my my love of history, I got into wet plated, and then I started. Well, I found out that there was this um, this photographer Orlando Scott Goff here in Bismarck, North Dakota, that practiced wet plating back in the eighteen seventies and eighteen eighteen eighties, and um, I found out that he took the very first photograph of Sitting Bull in Bismarck, my hometown, where I was born and raised. So Orlando Scott Goff at the Blockhouse Building. I I just ate dinner at Noodle Zip just tonight with my family which 50 feet from where I just ate, ate noodles was where Orlando Scott Goff had his studio and captured the first ever photograph of Sitting Bull. Not a photograph of Sitting Bull, the first photograph of Sitting Bull in my hometown of Bismarck, North Dakota. So I found out about this guy and he's very obscure. There was, you know, there wasn't a lot of, there's some old newspaper articles and, and I found little tidbits and books and stuff. So uh, a friend of mine, so I was into wet plating, a friend of mine, um, Lou Hoffermill, who worked for the State Historical Society years ago and was a historian, I commissioned him to write a, a journal, an entry on Orlando Scott Goff. So he spent two years and all we could get is 16 pages of text about everything that we ever known about this man. He was able to com- put it together in a peer reviewed paper. The State Historical Society in North Dakota grabbed onto it and it donated their entire journal for that quarter to, to the work that I commissioned with Orlando's, uh, with uh, Lou Hoffermill. So I found out about this photograph of Sitting Bull. So then I saw a Smithsonian article about Ernie Lapointe, the great grandson of Sitting Bull. So I found this idea, well, I'll just see if I can get a hold of this Ernie fellow. And um, I found Ernie down in Leeds, South Dakota. I call him on the phone on the second ring he picks up. I explain to him who I am. I explain to him the Goff photograph. Ernie already know knew about the Goff photograph. He says, yeah, I know about the photograph. I said, well, I'd like to take your photograph in the same process that Orlando Scott Goff took your great grandfather's photograph 135 years ago. He, within a week, he was in my studio. So I captured the great grandson of Sitting Bull in the same city in the same process that Orlando Scott Goff did back in, I want to say, 1882. And that's what kicked off this entire um, you know, I started sharing that and then someone, well, you should do a Native American series. And I'm like, I don't know any Native Americans. Like, I don't, how am I going to, how am I going to gain the trust of this entire, you know, the, this entire people? 
And um, then um, Dakota Goodhouse, I took his portrait and I started sharing that. And then I thought, okay, I'll do a series of 10 Native Americans. That was gonna be my series. And then when I got to 10, I was gonna, I'll do 50. And then when I got to 50, I said, I'll do 100. When I got to 100, I said, enough of this. I'm just gonna do a thousand portraits. Knowing darn well that it would take me about 18 years of my life to get a thousand Native American portraits in this process. So I'm um, over the thou a thousand portraits. I'm at portrait 576 as of last Friday. I captured a young uh, 12 year old, um, young Native American. Um, so I'm about eight, a little bit over eight years in for that, uh, those many portraits. So every 250 portraits, I'll have a book. So you just bought the book number two. Um, which is on pre-order right now, pre-sale. Um, but then there will be a book three and four. So eventually there'll be four volumes of books representing 250 plates for each each book. And that's my, um, I, I consider it my, my life's work. Like I explained to you earlier, the you know I've been um, given my own Hidatsa name. Um, I've had Native Americans come in from far as Florida, flying on a plane from Florida. Miss, Miss Indian World flew in from Florida with her dad and spent the weekend with me taking portraits. So it's just been this whirlwind of, um, of uh, something I just wasn't expecting at all. And, and it's, but I consider my Native American series, my life's work. It's, it's how most people identify with who I am. Um, but the, you know, I do creative work on the side and, and you know, I do anytime I can get a celebrity as well. I'm, I'm trying to always just try to capture as many wow. people and friends and family and stuff. Um, but um, there's, I have over 700 plates at the state historical society in North Dakota. Um, and um, I just continue to add to that. And I just uh, hope I'm around long enough to get to that, that thousand plates. And I, you know, people ask me, are you going to stop at a thousand? I'm not going to stop at a thousand, but I'll have achieved what I wanted to, you know, I won't, I will not be happy. Um, I will not be satisfied unless I can get to that thousand plates and I can, I'll make plates after that, but I need to get to a thousand plates. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's a goal of mine and it, and it drives me and, and um, I've got Native Americans coming in tomorrow and every Friday I'm, I'm booked out about, I only create on Fridays cause I'm running my, my, my dot com during, during the week. So um, I'm booked out about seven months for my Friday sessions right now. Wow. That is such a meaningful project. I mean, the long term and documenting is an uh, important part of history. That's yeah. Example. Well, uh, you know, Ed Edward Curtis. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he was he was a photographer that was doing dry plates in the early 1900s, and he captured 40,000 Native Americans doing dry plates. And um, you know, he would have he had he his reason for doing it was he thought the Native Americans wouldn't be here. I mean, he he legitimately, if you read his books he thought that this was a, he could call them the vanishing race. And he just was naive. He didn't understand. And, they, you know, if you would, if you could resurrect Edward Curtis and have him come into my studio and say, here's a guy practicing wet plate. And he would have known about wet plating because, you know, it was 20, 25 years, 30 years before him mm -hmm. with the process that he's doing. He, he just wouldn't believe you. And that I could have Native Americans in with their language and their, you know, their regalia and their, their traditions and everything. It, they're still here. They haven't gone anywhere. And, and so um, that's a wonderful story that he was wrong, that, the, that, that they haven't vanished and that, the, that they're, um, and, and I, I think that they're, you know, they're actually gaining momentum, that it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's like such a prideful thing for them to, um, you know, to continue to be who they are. And, and, you know, for me, just to be a little bit a part of that, just to document and to prove to prove that they are still here and and they're going to continue to be here, I have no doubts. But that was not the that was not the thought a hundred years ago. That they, they thought for sure that the white man was going to drive Native Americans from this planet, and, and I'm just so happy and, um, that 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 didn't happen, and that that we're able to um, prove all those those historians wrong. It wasn't he, he wasn't the only one that had that that feeling. So it, it's it's a wonderful thing, and to be trusted um, and to be trusted and to be uh, accepted into their into their their community you know we don't have as caucasians um we don't you know we have clubs stuff like that um you know you you try to find something that's similar to being adopted into it. there's no there's nothing similar i mean when when i when 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 a native american comes into my studio and they know that i i'm shadow catcher goche and hidatsa they come in and they they throw their arms around me and call me their brother I mean, where 
else does that occur? Do you know what I mean? Like this is this is this is like a huge honor. Like, and I, I take it so seriously. And it's the largest honor I've ever had in my life. When Calvin, he had an hour long ceremony in my studio here with exchanging of gifts, witnesses and everything to give me this name. Um, but when people know, you know, I'm, people always call me their brother and these are my sisters. So my brother, these aren't strangers coming in and I may never met them, but they're not strangers. They're coming in as my brothers and sisters. And can you understand the, you know, so, so, it elevates everything that I do here because I have this duty to them now to, to do my best, to put them in the best light, to take the best portrait I possibly can. I have a duty to my brothers and sisters to do this. And I was, Chase, I was committed to this before that, but then this came along and it's like, damn it, I'm going to finish the series for them. When were, Not you, for given me. That, when were gonna... you given that name and what was that like? It was, um, it was back in 2018, I was given that name. And um, so Calvin had been into my studio a couple of times um, and, and we had be, um, befriended each other. And um, he's a very respected elder from the Mandan Hadatsa Ricker Nation. And which is the, their, their tribe is just about 30 miles north of here, um, up in Newtown. And so I got a call from Calvin and he says, well, Shane, I, I said, what's going on, Calvin? He says, I got your name. So what do you mean? He says, well, I have your name. I said, Calvin, I don't, what, what do you mean you have my name? He says, I have your Native American name. I'm going to call you Mishde, and I'm destroying this, this pronunciation. So excuse me, but it's, it's, I've listened to it a million times. I mean, I practiced like weeks in advance of my naming ceremony. I, I had weeks to practice and, and I had a Hidatsa elder actually record her voice saying my name so that I could try to enunciate, uh, pronounce yeah. it as, as, as close as I can. But he said, I, I'm going to call you shadow catcher. Can I have a ceremony? And I just, I like fell off my chair. I mean, I absolutely like, I mean, it's not, it's not like, you know, getting like a, an honorary doctorate or something. It's, it, it's nothing, but this. nothing. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hold the weight. It doesn't hold the importance. It doesn't hold the importance. So now I have an entire, you know, an entire tribe that, you know, uh, you know, has my back and they do have my back. They had my back this week when I was being attacked out there. You should have seen some of the Native Americans chiming in saying, Shane, keep your chin up. We, we you know, we got you. Don't worry about this. You, we know who you are. These kind of things came across. They had my back this week. It's like, don't, don't mess with someone, you know, well, he's got friends like that. What was that ceremony like? You said they were ex exchanging gifts. As yeah, so we didn't. Um, one of the one of the things was important is that we couldn't video it. We didn't take any photographs during the uh, the event. We did a photograph. I actually did a wet plate afterwards of the of my witnesses and stuff. Um, so we didn't do any photographs out of respect for the naming ceremony. It was about an hour long, and we didn't do any video. Um, but uh, you know, we did some pictures uh, afterwards and and before. And um, it was just uh, Calvin came in and he um, it was very formal. It, it you know, the only thing that I have that it's similar to that is, you know, some kind of ceremony like at a church or something like that, because I mean, for my, my tradition, it was it was that kind of thing. But we did. He said we have to have food. So um, um, we had to uh, we had to make some we made this this corn like this corn stew, a uh, Margaret Landon um um, Yellow Bird, she's my sister. She's been a collaborator for mine since the very beginning. I said, Margaret, I gotta, I gotta make food. So she said, Shane, don't worry, I'll we'll come over and we'll make fry bread and I'll show you how to make this. So we're in my kitchen the night before, cooking up this traditional meat with buffalo and everything. It was just, it was just fabulous. So we had to have the food. Um, he said that um, I have to have witnesses. So I picked up my witnesses and I called them up and said, Will you come and be my witness? And and that's why I had my witnesses. And then there's this exchanging of gifts. So I would, um, I gave a gift to each one of my witnesses and I gave a gift to Calvin. And, um, and uh, he did his, um, his ceremony and his, his prayers. And, and I was bestowed this name that I will, I will carry with me until I'm no longer here. So were the, were the gifts themselves traditional or if you're allowed to say, what did that look yeah, like? Yeah, I, no, yeah, I, yeah, I had, um, I had hired, what, what I'd like to do is anytime I'm doing gifts, like when Deb Hallen came in, I gave her a gift for coming. I mean, Deb Hallen flew in from Washington, D.C. on her own dime. This, this is when she was, you know, Congresswoman, flew into Bismarck, Earth Dakota on her own dime to give a talk at my book signing for my first book. I mean, who does that? I mean, who does that? 
I mean, that's incredible. And then she becomes the Secretary of the Interior of the United States, the first Native American Secretary of the Interior of the United States. The day that she got announced as the Secretary of the Interior, guess what? It was a Friday. My phone rings in my back pocket. I'm in here with students. People, it says Deb Hallen. I pick up the phone and Deb Hallen is telling me about how she got selected for this, this position. I said, Deb, you absolutely have to have someone better to talk to than myself. Why are you calling me? You know what I mean? It's like, Deb, come on. You just got, you just got, uh, you know, you just got um, a position that has never been done before by a Native American, especially a feat. If you would have told General Custer, okay. That in 2021 or 2020 or whatever, that the Secretary of the Interior of the United States of America was going to be a female Native American. What do you think he would have said? I mean, seriously, look at how far we've come. Yeah. It's so fabulous. It's so fabulous. He never in his wildest dreams, he would have called you a liar. You know what I mean? Like, he, are you kidding me? I mean, they, there's no, any, you know, there's no way that that that, that gentleman um would I ever perceive that this was a cap fact, fact but it you know the she's here now she's she's appointed to this very important role here in the United States and it was an honor and and I talked to her every couple of weeks we talk um it's it's this whole you know this process brought us together and um so the, what I do is um when Deb Hallen came in I I I, what I do is I, um, I commission Native American pieces from Native Americans. I don't go out to websites and buy Native American items of any sort. I find uh, you know, someone that I know and trust or someone recommends them. You know, I need a bracelet or I need a necklace or you know, I need this or I need a blanket or I need anything, a ribbon skirt. Um, when that's the case, I, I commission a Native American trying to give back to put these pieces of art together for me and works together and they get paid and, and I get this authentic piece from them. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So the, the, um, the, the day that um, Deb Hallen was inaugurated into her position, she had a ribbon skirt on. Well, that ribbon skirt, I had commissioned that from a native American person. Deb said, I'd like a, a ribbon skirt. And, and she said, you know, I, I was so moved by the tribes up there when I came and visited you. Could, do you. Do you think you could find a seamstress to put one together for me? And, and Margaret and I found one. And, and it's like the most famous ribbon skirt of all times. I mean, it was in all these fashion magazines and all these articles online about Deb Hallen's ribbon skirt. And, and it was just something I, I found, you know, uh, Margaret and I found um, a Native American seamstress and, and she put it together. And then it came to my studio and then I sent it to Deb and she she wore it on that special ceremony. So it's always about giving back. Wow. I'm stunned, really. I'm at a loss for words. That's that's very cool. Oh. The connections you well, I, I'm, from that. I, hopefully I'm not rambling here too much, Juice. No, it's, 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 it's all um, unique, unique stuff. And I, right before we talked, I was just researching my own areas, like Kit Carson and the Indians and the way he would, he both lived and fought alongside and with that era of history. Mm -hmm. And, and so that just adds more importance to what you're able to do now and how far we have come. Yeah. How far we have come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. And, and, you know, and the fact that she's, uh, she's doing such a wonderful job and she's such a, a wonderful person. And, and um, I just uh, hope we can continue this trend of um, decency and, and um, trying to uh, try to look out for each other, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that, that's me after this last eight days of some people not looking out for me so well, but um, you know, people that really know who I am, they, they know who, what my heart is like and, and, and um, I'm not going to be swayed either way. I'm, I've got to continue to do these things for what, why I think it's important. And I'm surely not going to be censored. I'm surely not going to be told who I should not take a photograph of. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm surely not going to be told that I can't recommend a book that I, I enjoyed. If I'm willing to let my son, my 17-year-old son, if I buy him a copy and you know give it to him as a gift, you know, I feel pretty strong that there's nothing in that book. I, I I, you know, I give my life for my son. I would never harm him in any right. way. And I surely exactly. would, would want to put, I would not want to put some, um, some kind of 
you know, I would not want to introduce him to some negative person or, or something like that. Um, that's not what, so there's, there's no question for me. It's a great book. Jordan did a great job with that book. And so, and then so what if some people don't like it? They, I, I, you don't, and now I got to like every book. You don't have to like yeah. every book. Don't like it. Find, find something else to read. But damn it, you're, you're not going to tell me why I shouldn't like it. You know, you're not going to tell me what the, the book, the meaning of the book is. I know the meaning of the book. I've read it twice. And not only have I read it twice, I also listened to Jordan narrate it once. So I've been yeah. through that book three times. Yeah. There's not a damn word in there that I would not want my 17-year-old son to hear. There's good messages. There we could do better. We can do better. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We can do we can do better. And like Jordan, you know, anyone that says, you know, these attacks and stuff, you know what Jordan would say, that's not good, right? It's not that's not good. <laughs> How many times that's not good. That's not good. This is not good. This is not the way we should be handling ourselves. All the time. On both sides of the aisle. I'm not just talking about the left because I'm on the, it's the thing. I'm, I'm more left than I am right for goddamn sure. And so it's eating your own. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't do that. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good, Shane. <laughs> it's not good at all. <laughs> oh. That's great. Oh, shit. My, no, you're yeah, just fine. It's... You're just fine. Um, my la I, We talked about this over the phone briefly, just starting out in this, I don't even know if you'd call it an industry, in this area of art, this photography that you do. Mm -hmm. The moment that I saw it and kind of could feel what you were doing and the way that you were going about it absolutely fascinated me. Absolutely fascinated me. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to get started in this field of photography while yeah. still giving it the, and you, the respect it deserves? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not going to hear from me that you're not going to be able to do it because I've I've proven that I've, I've had about 15 photographers come in and learn the process from all over the country that I've trained. And these are professional photographers that, I mean, they have decades of experience have come in. Um, Herb Asherman from Cleveland, Ohio, has been taking photographs for over 50 years and he came in to learn from me. I mean, come on, seriously, how's that work? Yeah. The guy's taking photographs of Henry Kissinger and, and I mean, you know, uh, you know, Ford and he's taking, I mean, he's just, he's been a, a, he's a master photographer, comes into Bismarck, North Dakota, and he's visited here, I would say he's been here three times now. I mean, this is the friendship that I formed with this man, complete stranger, and I taught him. So this is not brain surgery. If this idiot here that's talking can do it, figure it out and never own a camera, anyone could do it. So um, wet plate Clodian photography, how I did it, I can explain to you how I did it. Um, there's a gentleman called John Coffer, John Coffer, C-O-F-F-E-R.com. He is a, a friend of mine, never met him, but he is a world-renowned expert in this field. And he, he wrote what's called the Doer's Guide, which is a manual on how to actually make wet plates. So for like 75 bucks, I sent him $75. He lives in a one room cabin with like one light bulb, no computer, no phone. I mean, he's, he's really, he lives the, the, he lives like the photography used to be. He actually went across the United States in oxen wow. with his wet plate chemistry at one, at, at one point. Yeah. So this guy is a character and he's absolutely fabulous. And, and you only communicate with him. I can't communicate with him. So I've got these wonderful cursive written letters from john like we're communicating he him, and i communicate like we would have like 170 years ago so i send him a letter oh. and a print and then john like four you know it's not like next week it's like four months six months later another letter comes back to me it's almost as if he sent it on a you know on the on uh, on, a, on a horse or something so months later i'll get another response from him and then i respond back so we corresponded right I probably got about eight letters, nine letters from him over the time. But so John Coffer, if you buy his man, you send him a 75 bucks. I want to say is what it is. And you, you can't do credit cards. You can't, you got to put a check in the mail to his little PX. He'll get it and he'll send you his doer's guide, which is this handwritten guide. It's someone typed it for him. You can get the John Coffer handwritten one, but his handwriting sometimes hard to read. So I'd recommend the typed one. And then you, I just started there with a highlighter and just started reading his book. And I read it a couple of times on the couch and my wife was saying, what are you doing? I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to learn this process, my love. And, um, and then, you know, watch YouTube videos. Um, 
I, uh, I'm available. I, I've got a, a group called Friends of Frederick Scott Archer on Facebook. Yep, I'm following so there's, that now. There's four, four, okay, so the, there's those are all wet plate artists out there. And you can, if you get into that, and then um, we can get you your chemistry. I use Bostick and Sullivan to get my chemistry. And that's what I'd recommend. So you can get your chemistry, and then we got to get your camera. We got to get you, you know, are you going to shoot on tin or glass? And there's a, there's a million different questions to ask, but it's nothing that you can't put together. We got to get you your trays, your glassware to hold your chemicals. We got to order your chemicals and we have to do that first exposure. So, um, you know, I just had uh, Jamie Marcellus from Canada just came down and just flew in just about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. He's a photographer who wanted to learn wet plating. We met during the pandemic on some, um, you know, some, uh, we were on a, a, a little, uh, meeting we'd have these little chat meetings together and he came down and spent the weekend and within a week of getting back home he's making wet plates on his own independently i answered some questions and so there's a there's a group of us and it's a small community but there's always people out there if i can't have the answer someone else had the answer we just try to we always are trying to help each other because it's it's a i mean a thousand people out of eight billion i've always joked that there's probably more underwater basket weavers in the world than wet plate clothing photographers you know what i mean like yeah they're not a lot of us and so that's why when i see in this community there's if there's any infighting or strife or people are jealous of other people and stuff like that like we're just you know what i mean like we all have to just look out for each other we're such a small there was um an expert i heard told me back in the 1980s there was it was down to like six wet plate artists in the world I mean, we got really close to like this thing, you know, being forgotten. And yeah, sure, someone could have, the future could always pick up a book and, and figure it out again. But you know what I mean? You'd always want to have someone practice. Oh, someone, someone, you know, for me, knowing the process, this is the best damn photographic process man's ever invented. Yeah. Someone needs to be carrying the torch at all times, as far as I'm concerned, at all times. Someone needs to be practicing, moving forward, continuing to develop, continue to do their, you know, their, their craft, they need to. It's just, we, we can't let this extinguish. We can't let, there can't be no wet plate clothing photo- photographers. That would be a travesty to Frederick Scott Archer and it would be a travesty to this whole process. So we need to keep this alive because it's valid and it, it, it kicks the crap out of a lot of other photographic Absolutely. processes. And, 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 you know, I don't mean to be, I'm not negative towards photographic processes. It's just when you're talking to a wet plate clothing photographer, I am slanted and jaded towards one ideal. This is, you're asking me what's best. And I'm telling you what I live and breathe. This is what I live and breathe and, and nothing compares to it. And I, I, and I see the response. I see the response just from, you know, from Jordan Peterson or, you know, people will, um, you know, I, I got people, I got a box of tissues in my dark room. People just break down crying. Like not because my work is so great, but they just, they see if they understand the history and I shared them and then they see this image come to life and they understand what that image represents. I mean, pe- complete strangers will, when's the last time you showed someone a photograph on your phone and they broke down in tears? I have not ever. I have <laughs> not. I, I have not. I have not. I've never witnessed that. Have never, you? Never. Have you ever witnessed that? Never once. You never witness it. Never once. Yeah. I'm on my second box of Kleenex in my dark. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. That's, that's the best thing I've ever It's fun. Oh, and right. I'm, I, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored. And um, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have you interested in what I'm doing. I shouldn't have the college students out. I shouldn't have the books. I shouldn't have the plates and all these archives. I shouldn't have any of that because I don't, I didn't know what I was doing. But you know, what I try to teach the students when they come out, I, the one lesson, I, I, I only got to reach one of these students. Even like, I've got probably eight to 10 different classes come out a year from junior high to high school to colleges. Um, I only got to reach one of those students a year. You know what I mean? Like if I can just get that connection with one of those students. And what I tell the students is, is that it doesn't matter if it's wet plating, okay? That's just what happens to be what I found. This is this is my thing, right? Find something in your life that makes you want to get up in the morning. Find something that drives you. Find something that you have passion for. I don't care if it's pottery. I don't care if it's painting. I don't care if it's restoring motorcycles. I don't care what the hell it is. Find that one thing in your life. Keep an, you know, keep an, an eye out for it. It's not like you're going to just know it. 
but you know, if I didn't take this chance on wet plating, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like, look at what I would have missed out on. I may have, I could have missed my opportunity. I could have missed this opportunity. I didn't. So keep your eyes open and to get it's what, you know, like we talked earlier, take a chance on a stranger, take a chance on something, you know, take a chance on something. If someone offers you something or you see something that, Oh, well, that's interesting. Dive down that fucking hole once. Mm-hmm. It may not take, it may not take you anywhere. You, you know, you may just say, Oh, well, that was interesting, but I'm not really, you know, but try it at least give it a try because you never know when you're going to, you're going to find the thing that you were meant to be here for. And I don't say that lightly. And when I say it about myself that I feel that I found this, um, sometimes I feel guilt because I know that there's people that will never find that. So my only message to these students is keep looking, find it. It's out there. Okay. Find it. It took me 44 freaking years. You kids are, you know, you're 22. You got plenty of time. Find it. And I if you find it when you're 76, find it. If at 76, you pass away at 77, at least you found it. Huh. Like try to find that one thing. Right. Try to find that one thing. And then with that one thing, guess what you should try to do? You should try to give back with it. Yeah. Yep. Give it back to the world. Do something for someone else with it. Wouldn't that be special? If everyone in the world found that one thing that they're the best at, and then they started giving it away to someone else, think about that for a moment. I'm getting goosebumps on my arm just even making saying yeah, these words. Truly. Think about that. I mean, how would where would we be if everyone was just finding out what they were they were meant to do, and then try to give it back a little bit, give it to someone else? Why not? There's nothing better. No, there's nothing no. better. Beautiful. I'm on. I'm on my soapbox. No, something. that's great. I don't, mean, I, that's I don't a, mean to. You've you've answered all the questions I've had. I'll be honest. And from my limited knowledge of the topic, I don't have. I can't think of anything more to ask. Your stories are incredible. Oh, and, and they're so. Well, unique. you wanted. You know, we did an hour and a half, and um, you know, I would. Uh, you know, I appreciate this. What I'd like to do, uh, Chase, and anyone who ever spends any time with me or. or comes into my studio or, you know, I, I, it'd be awesome if you ever get near North Dakota, you just come in and we can spend the day together. I'll, I'll have sitters or we maybe capture Native Americans. I may have some artwork planned or whatever, like just spend the day. And at the end of the day, I'll take your portrait. I mean, that's what, um, that's what I'd like to do for you is, uh, you know, for, you know, you taking the time here and just listen to my story. And, and it's all about, it's all about telling the stories and it's, it's all about documenting, um, you know, things. And, and, you know, you're giving me this first opportunity to document my little visit with, with Jordan. And it's important. And, you know, this this data file that you give me, this video of our, our recording here, um, you know, it'll go up to the State Archive. And, and at least someone will have a little bit of insight mm-hmm. into what I was thinking when I was doing this. I mean, this is the time to, you know, to reflect on this. It just happened eight days ago, right? You know, it, instead of me, you know, writing a journal or something or, you know, tears from out recalling this conversation you and i are having a conversation about and maybe these portraits aren't the the most important thing of jordan peterson but i i think they're they're pretty cool i i i think i i know that he enjoyed them i know that it was eighty thousand people that liked them online enjoyed them and um you know it, it, it's a little bit of the history how much a history it is that's to be determined because we don't we don't know Jordan Peterson's story is not over with my story is not over with so who knows what this is going to be but if someone ever in the future interested in what Jordan Peterson looked like and if I can get just one of these plates to one of these archives um, it'll be here 500 years from now and there'll be proof positive that I was with Jordan Peterson for an hour and 45 minutes and and we spent some time together absolutely well go ahead and um just shout out your websites and, and your wherever you're available at. Then I'll click, you know, end on the recording and we can wrap up from there. Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, you can find probably the best way to, if you want to look at my work, I would just type in Balkowitz, B-A-L-K-O-W-I-T-S-C-H, wet plate, two words on Google. You'll get there's, there's a, a bunch of content there. You'll get my website. You'll find my Northern Plains Native Americans. Um, I've got, if you want to go on Amazon, volume one is still out there, the trade edition, the, the actual, um, the, the limited edition version of, of volume one is sold out. So there's just some trade editions out there that the, the publisher still has. Um, but volume two will be coming out and it'll be on Amazon probably two or three weeks. So if you type in Balkowitz Native American on Amazon, you can, those two books will be available. 
Um, and I also have a documentary. Um, I don't know if I told you about this on Amazon, yep. Chase. Yeah, so there's an hour long documentary. Two film photographers uh, followed me around for a year and a half and did this wonderful little documentary. And actually, we're going to do a, uh, you know, it was supposed to be premiered. The world premiere was supposed to be at the Fargo Theater, which is a historic Fargo Theater, um, the, the week before COVID hit. I mean, the week of COVID. So COVID hit, we had to go into lockdown and we lost our premiere. So next, this next month, April 29th in Fargo, North Dakota, we're going to have the world premiere of of bulk which even though it's been out on on amazon and stuff so um you can the name of the documentary is bulk which b-a-l-k-o-w-i-t-s-c-h it's available on amazon prime you can get that out there and then um yeah you can just uh read different uh there's a wikipedia page out there for me and there's all kinds of stuff got different content i've got a youtube page and you can find me on facebook and on instagram and on twitter under bulk which my name once again so it, it's pretty easy to find me and um yeah it's 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 been an honor to do this i'd love to be able to take your portrait sometime chase so um thanks for letting me reflect a little bit on my 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 shoot with uh with jordan and document some of these thoughts and and um yeah it's uh it's an honor and i appreciate you as a complete stranger believing in what i'm doing and wanting to talk yeah absolutely absolutely fascinated by it and thanks for giving me the time you know you have so many people i'm sure oh of course no, it's an it, it's an honor. I and and you know I had um, someone asked me the, a couple of weeks ago. They said, "Well, how do you you know how do you get so much traction, Shane? Like, how do you get so much traction?" And and you know what I told them? What? I never say no to anything. I never say no to anything. Yeah. I've never said no to anything. Someone asked me about the, you. Can you do this? And it's related to wet plating. I've never said no to it. Mm-hmm. I've always taken the time. And and it you know see. So Here's that lesson again, you know, you give and you get, and you don't, you don't do things to always expect something back, but you'd be very surprised when you start just giving and giving and giving and giving every once in a while something comes back and it can be just so unexpected and, 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 and fabulous. And, and I, I, you know, I think Michaela and making, make give me my hour with Jordan. I mean, I think that's pretty positive too. Is that, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I fostered that little conversation with her, kept in touch with her and then, you know, you know, you got you got to put it out there in the universe. You got to put it out there. If you put it out there in the universe, there's a chance that it may just happen. But you got to take the chance of it may happen. Awesome. I've lectured too much tonight, Chase. So Not at all. You're just fine. That'll conclude the, the recording part here. I'll end that. And that's, that's, okay. that's awesome. Perfect.